Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So in our last video, we looked at uh, how to beta weight your portfolio to the SPY and then how to delta hedge that. Well, today we're going to look at the protective collar. So what is the protective collar? The protective collar is a hedging strategy to protect against a large loss at the cost of limiting large gains. It will consist of two strategies, and that is a covered call and a protective put, a married put, or a put spread. Uh, basically, the put side of this trade is our hedge, and the covered call is only done to offset the cost of the hedge. So typically, we want to enter this trade for a credit or a small debit, uh, sometimes free. Um, it is very flexible. You can adjust your strike selection to suit your needs, and the optimal time to enter this trade is going to be at an all-time high after a large move up and before earnings. Um, if you follow any unusual options activity, you'll see that um, protective collars are very common uh, right before an earnings announcement. So now let's look at the setup. Uh, for every 100 shares of stock, what we're going to do is we're going to purchase one out of the money put or a put debit spread, and this will be our hedge. Next, we're going to sell one covered call to offset the price of the hedge. And the trade can be entered for either debit or credit or for free, basically. So what we're going to look at, we have uh, the Qs here, QQQ, and basically the Qs are trading right around 357, 356 in that range. And what we're going to do is we're going to go roughly 5% out of the money to the 340 uh, strike. And we can see it's right here. And then we're going to go and we're going to buy a put here roughly about 90 days out. And then we're going to turn around and sell uh, a put right around 305, 300, which is going to be about 15% below that. So that means that from 5 to 15%, we're basically going to cap our losses at 5%. Next, we're going to turn around, we're going to sell a covered call to uh, pay for this hedge. We're going to try and make the hedge free or very cheap if we can, um, possibly for a small debit. We want to get it as close to zero as possible. So what we've done, QQQ at 356, uh, expiration roughly 90 days out, we can buy the 340 put, which is 5% out of the money, and sell the 300 put, which is 16% out of the money. This is going to give us the 340, 300 put debit spread, a cost of roughly $661. Then we found that the same expiration, the 375 covered call, is roughly 5% out of the money, and we can get a $650 credit on this. So that means that our total hedge is going to cost us roughly $11. Um, it is a small debit, but it's, it's going to give us a little bit more um, room on the top end, the 375. We could go to the 374, which would be a dollar lower, and we could enter this for credit as well, but um, $11 hedge is pretty cheap. And this is actually what it's going to look like on the risk graph. Uh, we can see that basically a 5% move up or down, uh, the stock is just going to trade right in line with the QQQ. It's going to be like we do not have a hedge on at all. Once we go above uh, 375 here, we have capped our gains at 375 for the next 90 days. And if we go 5% below the strike price, we have capped our losses at 5% on the low end here. And that goes from 340 all the way to 300. So anywhere in this range, we will not lose more than 5%. We're, our losses are capped right in this range here. Um, and this is doing the spread. If you wanted to do just the naked put, um, you could do that. And then this line right here would just run to infinity. Um, basically, the stock could go all the way to zero, and we would not lose more than roughly, I think that's about $1,500 right there. But to do that, um, this would actually cost about $200 more. Um, by selling this 300 put here, we're able to sell it for, I want to say, about 220 or so. So if we sold that, we would actually have to lower our covered call uh, somewhere down in this range right here to probably closer to the 365 or the 370 range. And that's going to limit our upside potential as well. So we can see basically we're going to match the QQQ one for one for a 5% move up or down. Our max upside potential is roughly 5% and our losses are also capped at 5% between a 5 and a 16% correction. 
If the market falls less than 5%, it will match the market. And if the market falls more than 16%, we will incur the same incremental losses beyond 5%. So if the QQQ goes down 18%, we would only be down 7%. So next, management. Um, management is pretty, pretty easy here. Um, if any of the contracts are in the money at expiration, they will be exercised. So what that means is if they call is in the money, you're going to want to close that um, most likely for a loss unless you want the shares to be called away from you. Um, but even though we're closing that for a loss, our stock is going to actually have a net gain. So the stock will offset the loss of the call. And we also want to pay attention to any dividends that are coming up um, because that could result in possible early assignment. If, if our call is fairly deep in the money, um, our shares actually could get called away and we would lose those shares as well as the dividend. As far as the put being in the money, if the put is in the money, you can actually close it out and the call for a profit um, because now that our stock is down, our put has increased in value and our covered call that we have sold is basically going to be worth nothing now so we can buy it back for nothing so that means we're going to have a net gain on both the long put and the short call and this is going to offset the lower stock price and sometimes uh, we can actually use this profit um, to buy more stock to lower our cost basis so instead of being down 17 percent we're only down seven percent so that 10 percent savings that we have not lost we can actually apply that 10 percent and purchase more stock and then any options that are out of the money, well, they'll expire worthless. So thanks for watching and have a great day.